Good morning, grade nines. Uh, so for today's lesson, we're gonna go over uh, multiplying by monomial. Uh, so we're, this is our fourth lesson now. So we're almost done the whole unit. We just have two lessons to go. Uh, and the last two lessons are relatively short. Um, so th um, this might actually recall a couple of things you might've talked about in elementary school. Um, you may have discussed distributed property. Um, so distributed property basically tells you that if you are multiplying a number, by a sum, then you can actually multiply the number by each of the parts of the sum. Um, so what that would mean, what would that would look like, um, for example, let's go to this first example here. We have um, four multiplied by five plus three. So obviously uh, we know with bed mass that we can figure out what's in the brackets first. So we can add uh, five plus three and then we multiply that by four. And obviously four times eight gives us 32. Now, there is a different way to do this. Um, we can use distributive property, which basically means that instead of me figuring out what uh, the value is inside the brackets and then multiplying, I could actually take the number outside the brackets and simply distribute by the numbers that are inside the brackets. That's what distribution means. Um, so I would do, uh, so in this example here, I would take the four that is outside the bracket and multiply by five. And then I would take the four that's outside the brackets and multiply by three. Um, so if I continue this step here, I then realize that 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 3 is 12. And then when I add the, the two values up, I end up getting 32. So this is actually true uh, for, all, for, uh, for any number that you have. Like if we were to multiply um, some number by a sum of two numbers, or three numbers, it could work for three numbers as well or more than that, um, then you could alternatively multiply the value, the number by each of the values inside the sum, and you would always get the same result. Um, so this idea is actually something that holds true, not just with numbers, it holds true with variables as well. So if I were to give you something like four times a plus b, um, you, you can distribute out that four, so multiply four times a, and then we can multiply, uh, whoops, uh, four times b as well. And when we do this, we end up getting 4a uh, plus 4b, because four, 4 times a really just gives us 4a together, and 4 times b gives us 4b together like that. Um, so this is a really powerful idea. And in this case, um, I hope everyone can kind of see that it actually is necessary for you to do that, because um, in unlike the first example that we looked at, where we could have added the numbers that were inside the brackets first and then multiplied, um, we don't have a choice here. Um, we can't add A and B together. They're not like terms. So because we can't add A and B together first, we have to do use distributed property. So I think the one big difference is before in elementary school, if you did ever see this, it was given as an alternative to actually solving the question. Uh, whereas now with variables, a lot of times you are going to need to use it. You don't really have a choice with it, right? Um, so you will actually have to distribute because uh, a lot of times in the brackets, you won't be able to add up like terms. Um, so this is called distribution when we multiply the monomial. Uh, so uh, the one term that is outside the brackets by each term that's inside the brackets. So a couple examples here. Um, so if we have five multiplied by three B plus four. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna simply take uh, the five outside the brackets, and then we multiply by the three that is in the three B that is inside the brackets. And then we do the same thing here. We take the five that is outside the brackets and we multiply by the four that is on the second, um, that's uh, the second term in our set of brackets there. So we have five times three B and then we have five times four. And then when we do the calculation here, we notice that this ends up giving us 15 B plus 20. And all we did in this case, just so everyone can kind of see this, uh, we simply took uh, five times three B and five times three B is obviously 15 B. And then for the next um, for the next multiplication, we have five times four, which is uh, obviously just 20. Let's look at another example. So the first one was a little relatively easy because uh, you obviously there's only one small variable. There's not, there wasn't really much else that we could do. Um, and this one, there's a bit more simplification that we need to actually uh, carry out. So in this next example, we'll first notice that the monomial is actually not on the left. 
it's on the right. Does that change it in any way? It actually doesn't. So we can still carry it out this exact same way. And I think this is where people get a little bit confused. If you see it on the right-hand side, don't stress. Um, you're still going to do uh, follow the exact same steps. So we're still going to take the monomial outside the brackets and multiply by everything inside the brackets. So going step by step here, first we have 3x multiplied by 2x cubed. Um, and when we have this, and I'm going to maybe write the steps here on the side so you can see it. 3x multiplied by 2x cubed. And by the way, I'm going to start using the symbol, um, this little dot to represent multiplication. Um, I know here I was using an x, but I will pretty much stop using x's um, when we get to variables because uh, a lot of times um, I don't want to use an x for multiplication. I don't want to use the actual multiplication symbol, the x there, because um, x itself is a variable. So to avoid confusion, I will start using a little dot, which basically represents uh, multiplication, okay? So when you see that dot there, that represents multiplication. Another way to represent multiplication, just so you know, and I think everyone knows this, is you can use brackets. So I could do something like uh, four times five, that would be four times five with brackets. Or I could do four times five like this, or I could use a traditional, um, little cross right if we want to use uh, if we want to represent multiplication but again as i mentioned already uh, with when i work with variables i tend to avoid that and i just use the dots there okay so here we're going to multiply uh, 3x by 2x cubed and of course that means that we have to multiply the numbers together we talked about multiplying terms so we multiply the numbers together and that ends up giving me six um, and then we end up with x multiplied by x cubed so the x and the x cubed are still multiplied together. Now, this is where people sometimes make a little mistake. Um, x times x cubed does not just give you x cubed. Um, we actually have to apply exponent laws because we're multiplying powers to have the same base of x. So in this case, the exponent um, for the first one is actually an imaginary one. So what we're going to do is we simply add up the two exponents. So we take 1 plus 3, and that ends up giving us an ex uh, a sum of 4. So that means that our first term is 6x to the power of 4. For our next term, we are simply going to take uh, 3x and we're going to multiply by 4x. And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here in the green. And for the last one here, I'm going to take, um, I'm just going to show kind of what's happening here. And then for the very last one there, we take 3x and we multiply by negative 5. And again, this sign is extremely critical, so don't forget that. Um, so I'm just kind of showing the work here. So we take 3x multiplied by 2x cubed. We already did that, um, and we actually simplified it already. And then we take 3x multiplied by 4x, which is this step right here. And then, of course, we multiply 3x by negative 5, and we end up getting this very last um, product right there. So we can see here that because we have three terms inside the set of brackets, we should end up with three separate multiplication questions, if that makes sense. So there's three separate products that we're going to have to um, simplify. So these are the three products that we have here. So we have 3x times 2x cubed, uh, 3x times 4x, and 3x times negative 5. So our next step is we're simply going to multiply the numbers together. And we actually already solved the first, uh, we already simplified the first one, but either way, I'm still gonna show it here. Uh, so we have six times X times X cubed. So we already figured out what that simplifies to. Three X times four, sorry, three X times four X. We know that the mul numbers multiply together to give us 12. And then we still have X times X. And then finally we have negative five times three, which is negative 15. So this is where you really, really gotta be careful. Um, the sign, uh, into whether you add or subtract the term, depends on the sign of the product. So hopefully everyone got that. So whether you add or subtract depends on the sign of the product. So in this case, because our product here ends up becoming negative, that means that we're going to be subtracting the, the term 15x. So we make sure that we put a negative in front. Um, so the sign is extremely important, right? The sign of the term will always go in front and that will determine whether you, whether you add or subtract. So um, our next simplification is to simply uh, simplify x times x cubed, which we already did. That gives you x to the power of four. And x times x, this is the one that people sometimes forget. Uh, remember, there's an imaginary one um, in the exponent. So one plus one ends up giving us two. So we end up with 12x squared. And finally, we end up with minus a negative 15x. 
and we put that all together, it becomes 6x to the power of 4 plus 12x squared minus 15x, and we're done. Uh, can we simplify any more than that? Nope. There's no more like terms, right? Uh, you always want to double check that there's like terms, but in this case, there are no like terms, so we leave it as is. Um, so we simplified the above, just a reminder, by using exponent laws. So that means that when we multiply powers with the same base, we simply added the exponents. Uh, so negative, mono, uh, negative monomial, if there is a negative sign in the monomial, um, so it's, if it's not positive, um, you're going to follow the same steps, but be extremely, extremely careful with the signs. Um, this is actually kind of similar to what we saw yesterday when we, when we talked about adding and subtracting polynomials. When you add polynomials, it was relatively easy. You just have to add the terms. When you subtract, um, I had already mentioned the trick of, of, of thinking of imagining that there's a negative one in, outside of the brackets and multiplying by negative one. Um, it's the same idea here. You just have to remember that the signs will switch, okay? So let's look at an example here. Uh, negative four multiplied by x squared um, minus three x. So first thing, just like before, we're gonna take negative four x and we're gonna multiply by x squared. And then we're gonna take negative four x and we're gonna multiply by negative three x. So um, in our first line here, uh, we're gonna simply show that we take negative four multiplied by x squared. And then we take negative four multiplied by three x, by negative three x. Um, and really important, I kind of subdivided this by color so you can kind of see here that th where the two products are. Because uh, what gets really confusing when people do these steps, um, they almost get lost as to how many, where the multiplication begins, right? Because there's so many different terms. Um, if you find it easier, you can always do your work kind of on a separate line here. And I would, I would suggest doing that even on a separate piece of paper. On a, so let's say on a test, um, for, for your test, you obviously want to write it out properly and neatly in one line in one uh, concise group of, uh, group of steps. Um, but if you maybe want to do your, your steps on a separate piece of paper, that's probably not a bad idea, right? Uh, so take all, the, take all your minor steps here and just do them on the side. So we can definitely do that in this case. We're simply just multiplying negative 4x times x squared, and then we're multiplying negative 4x times negative 3x. And we're going to do this kind of separately, right? So we have two different products that we're finding here. So we can multiply each of these separately. So we have uh, negative 4x times x squared. So we know that there's no number here. So that makes it pretty easy. You end up with negative 4x to the power of 3. And again, how did I get 3? I simply took the exponent 1 here and the exponent 2 there. And I added them up. And I ended up getting 3. For the next one here, I have negative 4x times negative 3x. Um, and of course, I just have to multiply the numbers together. That ends up giving me 12. And then I have x times x. And we know that x times x gives us x squared because all you have to do is just add the two uh, exponents there. So we end up with uh, negative 4x to the power of, sorry, negative 4x to the power of 3 um, plus uh, 12x squared. And of course, here I'm just showing you all the minor stuff that we just went through. Um, and I simply find my answer. So I end, it ends up being negative 4x cubed plus 12x squared. Hopefully that kind of makes sense so far. Here's another example. Uh, and so now they're starting to get a little bit messier. So we have negative 2n squared plus uh, multiplied in brackets by 3n minus 5 plus 4n cubed. So again, same idea. We're going to take the negative 2n squared outside the bracket and multiply by all the terms that are inside the brackets. It's going step by step, and there's no rush, right? Um, so you're going to have three separate products. So the first, uh, so again, we're just distributing out. So we take the monomial outside and multiply by each of the terms in the polynomial inside. Um, and what we end up with is negative 2n squared multiplied by 3n first. That's our first product. And then our second product is going to be negative 2n squared times negative 5. And our last product is going to be negative 2n squared times 4n cubed. So we have three different products that we're finding here. Um, so we're going to be trying to simplify those three products. And extremely, extremely important, I cannot reiterate this enough, um, you really need to make sure that you include the negative sign when you're multiplying there, okay? So in the first step here, 
we're multiplying a negative 2n squared by a positive 3n. So a negative times a positive actually ends up giving us a negative. Um, and we know that 2 times 3 is, is going to be negative 6. So we're going to write negative 6n squared uh, times n. And we just simply put the powers next to each other, n squared and n next to each other. Um, let me erase this so it gets out of the way. Um, and then our next product, and if it makes it easier, I'm maybe going to circle them all together so you can kind of see what, where the products are. So this is my next set of products. So my next set of products, I have um, negative two n squared multiplied by negative five and negative two n squared multiplied by negative five. We simply multiply the numbers together. So negative two times negative five gives me positive 10. Um, and then of course I have n squared by itself. So I just write n squared by itself. That makes it pretty easy. And the very last one here, I have negative two n squared multiplied by 4n cubed. And what I notice is because I have negative times a positive, I end up with a negative. So I end up with negative 8 specifically. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Um, and then n squared multiplied by n cubed is the product of the powers there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to uh, simplify what I have so far. So I have negative 6n squared uh, times n in the first line here. So in order to simplify that, I know that I can uh, use exponent laws. So I simply add the exponents. So I add 2 and 1, and that ends up giving me six, negative 6n to the power of 3. And then in my next line here, I have n squared uh, by itself. I didn't actually have to do anything there. 10n squared, that's pretty easy. And then, of course, um, I have n to the power of 2 times n to the power of 3, and then that ends up giving me n to the power of 5. Um, and so I end up putting it all together. I end up with negative 6n cubed plus 10n squared minus uh, 8n to the power of 5. All right, let's do the next one. Uh, so we're going to expand and simplify here. So we have negative 3x multiplied by xy plus yz. So in this, in this example here, we're going to take the negative 3x outside the bracket and multiply by the terms inside the brackets, going step by step here. Um, so we have in the first step here, uh, negative 3x multiplied by xy. And then we have in the second step, and I'm just going to underline this so you can see the steps there. And the second set of steps, I have negative 3x um, multiplied by x by yz. Now, the, the reason I gave this question, just because I think it gets a little bit weird with multiple variables. Um, when you're multiplying multiple variables, um, it's sometimes people get confused. They don't know what to do, right? Um, in this case, you can't use exponent laws, just so, just so you're really clear on that, because they are not the same base. However, um, you, if you're multiplying variables, uh, different variables together, it's actually quite easy to do. You just put the variables next to each other. So if I have something like negative 3x multiplied by xy, um, I just simply put, I, I simplify it by multiplying x times x. So that gives me negative 3x squared. But then I end up with just a y on its own. That's okay. You can just leave the y by itself. Um, you simply just write it next to x squared. Um, so sometimes we expect there to be more simplification that needs to be done, but sometimes when you're multiplying, but every now and then you'll end up with examples where um, you really can't simplify more. So sometimes it's actually quite easy to multiply. In this case, you just simply put the negative 3x next to the y and z, and this gives you negative 3xyz. And hopefully that makes sense. Um, just a small little note here, and I forgot to mention this a couple of times. Um, it's customary uh, to always put the number first, the numbers first before the variables. So um, I could technically write negative three x y z. I could technically write it like this: um, multiply by negative three y z. But this looks really odd. It's just a general notation in math that we always put the numbers before. So you always want to put the numbers before all the variables. And then once the variables are listed off, we normally tend to put them in alphabetical order as well. Um, so we talked about this, that if you are multiplying um, powers, remember that if they don't have the same base, then you simply just write the variables next to each other. You actually can't use exponent laws in this case. Um, so just be really mindful of that. Um, it, oops, 
sorry, sometimes the keyboard goes a little crazy. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and again, to clarify, you always put the number uh, when whenever you have your term, you always put the number in front, right? And that's why it's called the coefficient, right? So it's the first number that goes in front. So make sure you put the number first and then the variable. Okay, um, finding the missing monomial. So kind of backwards questions a little bit. Um, so sometimes you're gonna be given questions where uh, you actually had the simplified form. Uh, sorry, you had the simplified expression already and I made a little typo there, I can fix that later. Um, and you are actually asked to find the missing monomial. So this is actually something you're gonna do a lot of in grade 10, just so you know. Uh, you're gonna become a, a really good pro at this, um, but for now, um, we are just going to kind of briefly discuss a strategy you can use. Um, and it's not really a set strategy. It's more guessing and checking. Um, there is a different way to do it, obviously. But uh, for now, we'll just talk about one possible way that you could solve this. So let's say you're asked to find the missing uh, term here so that that missing term multiplied by x cubed minus, uh, minus 5x minus 4 ends up getting us 2x to the power of 5 minus 10x to the power of 3, minus 8x to the power of 2. So what this question is really asking you for um, is to figure out what is missing outside of the bracket so that when I expand it, when I multiply uh, through, I end up with this whole expression right here. So the first thing I would do is I would think to myself, all right, if, I, if that monomial was there, if I knew what it was, what would I do with it? I would simply multiply that monomial by all the terms that are inside the polynomial in the brackets. So that means I would be taking, um, I would be taking the missing monomial and multiplying by x cubed, and I would end up with the first term over here on the right hand side. So I'm actually going to highlight this. So I know that when I multiply this missing monomial by x cubed, I'm going to end up with 2x to the power of 5. And then I follow the exact same step for the next one. I know that if I multiply, um, if I multiply uh, the missing monomial by 5x, I would end up with a negative 10x cubed. And again, look at the sign that's in front of the term, right? So if I take that missing monomial and I multiply by negative 5x, I end up with negative 10x cubed. And finally, if I were to multiply that monomial by negative 4, I would end up with the very last term there, which is negative 8x squared. Now, keep in mind, um, this question is still relatively easy in the sense that um, they kind of put it in, in the order that you want it in. Um, if they wanted to make it a bit more complicated, they could have mixed around the order. That would get a bit more confusing. Um, but for now, just so you know, I don't think I, if, if I do put a question like this, I would never try to trick you with it. I would put it in the order that um, in the simplified expression, I would put in the same order that you would be multiplying the terms in. OK, so I won't try to throw you off too much. Um, so now we just simply have to figure out what we multiply x cubed by so that we end up with 2x to the power of 5. And same with the other expression, what we multiply this missing, uh, what we multiply the mono, sorry, what we multiply negative 5x by to end up getting uh, negative 10x cubed. So in our next step here, um, I simply have to figure out what the missing um, term is. So I just have to think to myself, all right, if I have x cubed and I end up with 10, 2x to the power of 5, what am I missing? Well, I noticed here that um, I would need 2 because if I'm multiplying by 1 and I want to end up with a product of 2, I would have to have a 2, right? Um, and then let's look at the power. Well, I know it's gonna have it's gonna need an x, right? Because here I have x cubed, and somehow magically it goes into becoming x to the power of five. So I have to figure out what is the power that what's the power I would be multiplying by. Well, in this case, I would have to multiply by x to the power of two, and we can verify two x squared times x to the power of three ends up giving us two x to the power of five. So we can kind of do guess and check to kind of figure out what that is. And uh, probably a good idea to even do it for this, the other two uh, terms and just verify that it makes sense. So we have, um, I'm just gonna erase this here. So for the other two terms, we could do, we could do the same reasoning here. Uh, so let's say that I am taking the missing monomial and I multiply by negative five X. So I just want to check 
does it make sense that I would get, uh, th that the missing monomial would be 2x squared? Well, um, let's think here. Some number multiplied by negative 5 gives me negative 10. What does that number have to be? It needs to be 2, right? Uh, so to go from negative 5 to negative 10, I multiply by 2. And then, of course, um, the x would have to be multiplied by another x to give me x squared. So it also makes sense that this would be, um, oops, and there's a 3 right there. I was going to say, it, like, it's starting to look different. So if I have an x right here and I'm thinking to myself, all right, what do I have to multiply x by to get to x cubed? I would have to multiply by x squared. So it's already making sense that the missing monomial would be 2x squared. And then once you actually find that, uh, that missing term there, I would simply um, just verify that it actually works for the whole entire expression. So if we were to replace this question mark up here with 2x squared, and then we distribute out, do we get the same answer on the right-hand side? Well, let's check. So if I take 2x squared, and then I multiply by all the terms that are inside the polynomial, um, I should end up with the exact same answer that I have on the right-hand side. And we can do the work here. 2x squared times x cubed ends up giving us uh, 2x to the power of 5. And then 2x squared uh, times 5x ends up giving us negative 10x cubed. And then 2x squared times negative 4 ends up giving us negative 8x squared. So I end up getting the same answer that I have on the right-hand side. So this is definitely correct. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, this is just kind of a trial and error method. Um, there is technically a different way you could do this. Uh, the different way that you could approach this is you could actually, um, you would almost want to think of division in terms of uh, figuring out what the missing term would be. So if I were to, if I were to try to figure out what I multiply x cubed by um, to get to 2x to the power of 5, I could, and I just want to show you just an alternative way I could do this. Instead of guessing and checking, um, I could have taken um, the actual product and the, on the right-hand side, 2x to the power of 5, and I could have divided by x to the power of 3. And by doing that, I would be able to find that the missing monomial would be 2x squared. Um, and all I, have to, I would have to do here is simply use uh, exponent laws. So there is a different way to do this, and it's a bit more... Um, I was going to say more scientific or more uh, mathematical approach um, instead of just using guess and check. Uh, but in this case, because the question was relatively easy, we could really just guess and check. And I would I would say that that's a little bit simpler sometimes. Okay, so now we have an example where we're finding area. So if we have an air, a rectangle that has a width of 2x minus 3 and a length of x 7x, um, we want to write a simplified expression for the area and the perimeter. So what do we do in this case? Well, um, to find the area, we know that to find the area, we simply multiply length and width. So in this case, our width is actually given to us directly. We're told that it's uh, 2x minus 3, and our length is given to us as well. We're told that it's 7x. Um, so in this case, all I'm going to do is simply multiply 2x minus 3 and 7x. Uh, so when I multiply 7x by 2x minus 3, I know that I can simply uh, distribute this out. So I take 7x uh, multiplied by 2x, and then I take 7x multiplied by negative 3. So let's do the math here. 7x times 2x ends up giving us 14x squared. And then we have um, 7x multiplied by negative 3. Um, so this second product here. So here's my first product, and here's my second product, 7x minus 3. We know that that ends up giving us negative 21x. And um, we look at this expression, and we always ask ourselves, can we go any further? Can we simplify? No, we can't. So I would just leave it as is. So we end up with 14x squared minus 21x, and that is our expression for area. Now, for a perimeter, um, we would be simply adding all the sides of the rectangle. So if we picture our rectangle like this, um, we have a length of 7x like that, and the width of 2x minus 3 like that. Um, so if we want to find the perimeter, we would simply add up all the sides in this rectangle. So you could take 7x plus 2x minus 3 plus 7x plus 2x minus 3. And I believe we did uh, something, a question that was somewhat similar to that. Um, and when we were discussing, um, I think there was a word problem we had in 
the last and one of the two uh, one of the lessons that we did in this unit where we did have to find the area and the perimeter um and we and for perimeter we ended up just adding all the sides you could definitely do that um but just to kind of practice with distribution i purposely want you to use this version of the formula and this version of the formula for perimeter tells you that you'd simply take the length and the width and you multiply by two so in this case um we're multiplying a monomial which is two by the terms inside the brackets, which are which create our polynomial. So we're just taking the monomial and multiplying by the polynomial inside. So in this case, we would simply uh, take the length, which is seven x, and we take the width, which is two x minus three. And all we're doing is we're simply substituting that into our set of brackets. So we could use distributive property here and simply take two x, uh, sorry, two times seven x, and then take two times two x and then takes two times negative three. Um, but of course you can, um, we, you might wanna simplify this a bit more. Um, there's a different way to do this. Obviously you could add up the two like terms that are inside the brackets as well. So there's actually multiple ways to do this question. Um, we could up, add up the like terms and then uh, inside, so seven X and two X and then distribute. Uh, but let's actually use distributed property in this whole case. So because we're adding, um, because we're adding a polynomial, we know that basically the brackets don't make a difference here. So we can simply um, go to our next step of multiplying across. So we could take two times seven X, two times two X and two times negative three, and then add them all up. Or I could add up my like terms. And I know I, I'm allowed to do that because seven uh, X and two X are like terms. They have this exact same variable and the same exponent as well, right? The exponent would just be one. So in this case, I take two times nine X, which gives me 18 X. And then I take two times negative three, which gives me negative six. So just so you know, there's multiple ways of uh, completing this answer here. You could have gone through it um, in, in a multitude of, uh, of methods. So you could, there's definitely not just one way to do it, uh, but as long as you get the correct answer and it makes sense and you, you found it by distribution, then you should be fine there. Uh, so that's all I have to do in this case is I simply, uh, distribute out the two and I end up with 18x minus six. So I hope that makes sense. And there's a classwork. All right, best of luck.